and welcome to The Hard Truth. Now, most of the time, uh, The Hard Truth focuses strongly on public issues, economy, politics, and institutions. Today, we are shifting from the norm of those institutions to people, and I've realized that our society does not celebrate achievements and achievers. So for the second time, I have the privilege of talking to uh, Mr. Albert Asien, not as a retiring group CEO, but as an individual who has worked for the bank for the past 25 years and is Africa's Banker of the Year 2015. How did he do it? What makes him tick? My name is Nana Akosia Kunedu and we are currently in Lome, capital of Togo at uh, Miss Asian's house and it's going to be an interesting conversation. Do stay on. We'll be right back. Hello, Mr. Welcome, Akosia. Thank to my you. home in Lomi. You have a big house. Oh, you like they, the house? I do. Please sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm looking good. Yes, and how is Lomi? Lomi is okay. Anyway, why, why head office in Lomi? I mean, uh, the president of Lomi at that time, Yasinbe mm -hmm. Elia Dema, yeah. was quite generous to the group. When actually nobody wanted to host us, mm -hmm. he saw the vision, so he did host us. And that is why we are in Lomi. And then what did government, uh, the Ghana government do? They said the Koban should be in Ghana or something. Uh, I don't think I want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll welcome again to the Hartree for the second time. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank sir. you. Now, I believe you've worked for uh, Ecobank for 25 years. Tell me about the highs that you were, you know, involved in. Ecobank, the highs, was my first day in the office. Uh, you go into a residence, actually. That's where we started. I remember my office was in the bathroom. What? Because I, it was a wooden <laughs> floor and I could see the bathtub had just been lifted. Yeah? Yes. The next yeah. point was when I became the managing director of Ghana. What was the uh, feeling like? Uh, it was self-fulfillment. I was very happy. Mm. I mean, the, the highs that contributed to Ecobank, what, I, what would you say when what, what you were involved in? What were those highs? Apart I think from the, you the, being the there? high was the passion of the team. Uh, the fact that the team wanted to make this dream, this African dream, come true. Mm. So I think that is what I attribute to the success An of the An African group. dream, just um, having a, a branch in every perhaps country or something, that, that's the African dream. Yes, in Middle Africa and also building a world-class Pan-African institution. And what was the lows? Tell me about the lows. You were the lows have been some tough... Uh, times uh, when the group was at the precipice. Uh, the recent one was uh, the rampus we had uh, in the year 2013, which ended mm. in 2014 mm. when I assumed the office of the group CEO. Yeah, so would you say both highs and lows has contributed positively to the success of Ecobank in general? I guess we've learned from our lessons, uh, the mistakes we've made, uh, we've learned from the lows, and we have built on. Mm. So we've had some very good times as an institution. I'm sure you knew for, you're going to be group CEO for a year. Why just a year? Uh, 15 months. 15 months. Because uh, I have to retire mandatorily at the year 60. Yeah, I mean, I know that, but why not perhaps staying on for three, four years or something? No, uh, that is not allowed. It, it, it's not part of the governance structure. Mm. The governance structure is that you retire at the age of 60. So I just had 15 months to make a difference. 15 months, I'm sure you, when you came in, you said, mm, I have specific goals or target goals set for yourself. What were they? Well, 15 months, uh, the goal was to stabilize the institution, uh, to bring back confidence and trust from all our stakeholders, mm. and also to establish what I call the leadership rhythm. Yeah because the group was rudderless when I took over. So would you say that it's um, enough time for having done your bed? you think your set, your set target or your goals have been dealt with? Working with the team, we have achieved the goals. Which is it's a much what? better bank. So it's today. stabilized now, I can say? Largely stabilized mm -hmm. and management rhythm has been established. We hear 
that um, uh, you know Cherry took you uh, EcoBank to court. What's the issue now? Well, the issue is in court, so mm -hmm. how do you want to comment on that? I mean, that's I mean, uh, yeah, you took over because of that, and it's still in court. Do you think you've done well in that sector because you were brought in to stabilize issues and you know do away with that issue, and it's still in court? So, would you say that yes, you know, you've done well? You have to allow the court process to progress. Mm -hmm. We cannot interfere with the court process. Well, why is it taking too much time? Well, I think the court process grinds slowly, mm. and we have to live with it. Having said that, I don't think it has been much of a distraction of late, and uh, we would resolve the issue ultimately. As a group CEO, people who have issues, you know, going back to normal life, I would say. I mean, adjusting to what we call uh, the normal life and not, you know, just being grinded or, you know, granging to the position of a group CEO. How are you going to adjust? I know? have always lived two lives. Hmm? I have lived the life in character as an officer of the bank, and I've lived in person. Hmm? I always remind myself that I'm a Betesian, the human being, hmm? and I've always not done anything that I cannot live with past my employment life in Ecobank. So, so I don't think adjustment would be a difficult thing. Oh. In so fact, I've already you adjusted. Have, oh, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have a, what would you call it, uh, you, you wouldn't stay in the official residence, you wouldn't, you know, there are some privileges you can't get anymore, and I'm asking how you're going to cope with that. Do you home really that I, care about My home that? that I will stay in would be better than the official residence. <laughs> we'll be right back to stay on. Bank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Ecobank Ghana have several awards to their credit. Asian Banker 2014 Best Retail Bank in Ghana, CIMG Best Bank of the Year 2001 to 2006 and 2012, The Corporate Initiative Ghana Best Bank of the Year Award 2012, Best Financial Services Provider 2012, just to mention a few. I wish Ecobank family a happy silver anniversary. God richly bless you. We just want to thank them so much uh, for the confidence that they had in us. Um, um, it was because of them that we have come this far. You know, without the customers, we are no bank. Without the customers, you don't have an institution. So we just want to um, express our appreciation you know, to them for keeping faith with us and being with us and doing business with us uh, so we are 25 years old. So this has been the story of Ecobank Ghana. Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back and uh, you're still watching the hard truth from Togo Lome and uh, we are still here at uh, Albert Asian's house and it's proudly brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Albert, who will you miss? Who will you miss from Ecobank? Who will I miss? Yes. I'll miss the entire staff. Yeah. I had a great team, huh? mm. and I'll miss the team. What will you miss? What, what exactly would you miss there? What will I miss? I can't put a finger on what I'll miss. Mm. What, what responsibility, you know, did you really like at Ecobank? You know, I'm sure you had a lot of responsibility. Oh, I loved building like? East and South in Africa. Mm. I loved... Why is uh, that? East and South in Africa? Yes. Why not West Africa? Well, West Africa was like the done. In West Africa, I opened um, the subsidiary in Sierra Leone mm. and the Gambia. I managed Ghana, uh, which I'm very proud of. But I think my real high point was building East and South in Africa. 
I open subsidiaries in Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, and Zambia. Mm -hmm. And I also opened the rep office in South Africa. Retirement, does it scare you? If someone says, I'm going to retirement and I'm 60, is it scary? Are you ready no. for retirement? For me, it's self-fulfillment. Mm -hmm. At a point, you need to step into another life. And I'm looking forward to that life. Would you take your hands off the bank completely, looking at the wealth of wisdom and experience you have in banking? Would you perhaps... Are you, you referring know, to no. EcoBank specifically? No, not perhaps EcoBank. EcoBank or other banks. What would you do with the wealth of knowledge or experience you've I'll acquired? share that knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing advice work. I'll be working with one uh, great consultancy firm in the world. I don't want to mention the name yet. By doing so, I will share knowledge uh, with various institutions. Not EcoBank? Not EcoBank in particular. So, oh, so you are taking your hands off completely. Why not? Not completely. If I need to come and lecture at the academy, they have an academy, I will come and share knowledge with them. Mm. But I will be doing that with other institutions too. Oh, but people go on retirement and, you know, start golfing and, you know, going on cruises and holidays. Are you going to have any fun? I'll be doing that in between. Okay. I will definitely be golfing and I'll be going on cruise. I've never been on a cruise. So oh, this, you is the this is the time for me to be on a cruise. Okay. Yeah, after working very hard in my life. I remember in one of your uh, usual speeches or remarks, you, you made mention that, you know, success shouldn't be built on one's shoulder. So can I say you made yourself, Albertesian is self-made? Yes, largely. But, you know, sometimes people also help you down the line. You know, uh, I will always mention Charles Asari. Charles uh, Asari? Yes, Charles uh, Asari. Airport. Yes. Oh, what did the he MD do? The MD of Ghana Airport Company. Yeah. He actually brought me to EcoBank. No. Yeah, he stood for me. Uh, I don't know what he saw in me, but uh, Charles Asari insisted, <laughs> insisted that uh, yeah. I should be part of his team. Mm. So I will always give my success as a tribute to Charles Asari. Mm. What did he but, do? But, well, Charles actually interviewed me and uh, against all odds insisted that I should be part of the team. Mm. I guess Charles saw something in me that I never realized myself, mm. but Charles gave me that ladder to climb. And having had that ladder, I climbed it very quickly. Yeah. So w w can I say that, uh, you know, your, your, I mean, you, you just mentioned Charles's name and, you know, we need people to perhaps move on in life. And from what you're saying, I mean, we need a lot of people. So at every stage in, in time, you need someone to hold your hand. And also, Charles is the only one who, who brought you up in EcoBank, can I say? No, that? actually, uh, there are others who have contributed to my being who I am today. So would uh, you mind changing what you said, that success is not built on, you know, being on or lending on someone's shoulders? It's no, actually let, let, let me explain that. Please let me do. explain that. Please do. Uh, what I mean is that you don't do it on the back of others. You don't stand on others, standing on them. That doesn't mean that you don't need the help of others. Mm. You know, there are some of us who pull others down just to move up. Yeah. What I call the crab mentality. If you have a number of crabs in a bowl, none of them will ever come out. Yeah. Because the crab pull one down when you want to move on. That is what I refer to as don't stand on others' shoulders to actually move on in the corporate ladder. Mm. But you definitely need help and people come in to help. You know, in the corporate ladder, people would give you that ladder to climb. You need to actually chart your path and climb that ladder. So you get a window and then you find it and you move on. Exactly. What, to say. exactly. what would you say the recipe of success is in, is in banking? Discipline. Discipline. It's as simple as that. Why is that? If you are not disciplined, you'll be wayward. Mm. You deal with people's money. Uh, you need to have integrity. People will need to trust you. And they have confidence in you. Mm. And when you are disciplined, then you can stay on the right path. Mm. So discipline is very important. Okay. I want us to, talk, to uh, talk about family. We hear of just you. We don't hear of Mrs. Asien. Who is Mrs. Asien? Mrs. Asien is there. Yeah. Hannah you know she's is there. there. Hannah works for a bank. Okay. She works for Ghana Commercial Bank. She's a senior banker, mm. just like me. So, so I mean, I'm just thinking, so how can two bankers with different and busy schedules, you know, have time for each other? How do you do that? Well, that's the trick in the family, isn't no. it? 
What? <laughs> <laughs> you love to share. Two I mean, what, what, what is it? What, what do you guys do? Well, I've always told you that one should live two lives. You live as a person and you live in character. Mm -hmm. In character is what you do in the office. In person, when you come home, you are not a bit easy in the group CEO. Your husband. Yes, exactly. You are the father, the husband, mm -hmm. the brother, the uncle. So we've lived those lives, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been able to balance it very well. So did Mrs. Asian largely contribute to who you are now? Can I say that? She did. Mm -hmm. She was there. She supported me. I have done a lot of traveling, so she actually took care of the three children. Mm. Why the kids? The kids are in Canada. Oh, they all finished university. They actually will kill me if they hear I said that kids. <laughs> they actually are all in the university. Yes, they've all finished oh, the first fantastic. degree. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. but the first boy is still gone back to do a postgraduate mm. diploma. The others are working, okay. the boy and the girl. So I'm sure the cruise will be the family, I'm guessing. The cruise? Yeah. No. Oh, not the family? <laughs> <laughs> you love to go to the cruise alone? Yes, I would love to, perhaps to reflect and perhaps to go with Mrs. Cecilia at a point in time. Mm, okay, so the and I could also go with others. Yeah, I could also go with friends okay. also on the cruise. Okay, yeah. so the retirement largely you would concentrate much on family, which is the most important thing in I life. think I would do that uh, because I've been largely away from the family, but I also work. Mm. I, I really don't understand why there is too much competition in the banking sector, especially in Ghana, where, you know, young bankers, you know, stay in office for long hours, and then the competition is just overwhelming. What, what would you say about that in, uh, in the 90s and now, comparing that? What, what are the differences? I there? don't think it's got to do with competition, per what se. What is it? I guess it's got to do with the use of people's time. Mm. People need to use their time efficiently and they need to have time management. Mm. I don't think that your productivity equates the, the number of hours that you stay in the office. I think some just like to stay over and stay no, over. Not necessarily stay in office. Um, some bankers, you know, give uh, their uh, workers or employees huge targets to meet. It drains them. Some some die along the line because of the stress. They do die. They do die. I know of some institutions, the stress or the workload is too much. Some of them died and all that. Well, what can you say? As a banker, what goes into banking? How do you is measure so workload being too much? Oh, they set targets too high. They tell me. The targets are too high. Targets are too but high. But others meet the targets, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. I guess it's a question of how you make use of your time, and how you actually balance work in life mm. it comes to that you should be able to soak the pressure but you should also be able to have fun yeah by so doing i guess you can handle the stress better mm. but targets yes uh banking has changed uh you need to be nimble you need to be fast uh, execution should be with speed so there isn't much time to to waste on transactions when so, you yeah so you need to work harder than before but I think that you can balance that act properly some of us have done it no so comparing I mean how do you compare uh, banking in the 80s 90s to the 2000s is it the same well it's now more electronic uh, it's moving digital in the past it was more manual so in the past, I thought it was a bit more laborious. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I started work in Ecobank, we have something we call spreads. It was manual. It was a lot of work. Uh, when you make a mistake, you need to go back, erase almost everything. Uh -huh. But now you do it with the computer. There's a software. I think there are gadgets that makes life also a bit more easy for bankers. But it still calls for hard work because there are a lot more banks out there. Everybody is going after the same customer and you need to act with speed. How would you advise young people who think that their workload is overwhelming and is stressful? What would you tell them? I think they need to pace themselves. Uh, they need to have time for themselves too. Mm -hmm. And they need proper time management. You don't need to stay in the office till midnight or whatever to show that you are productive. I guess some of us are not good time managers and that is important. Mm -hmm. Ecobank, leaving Ecobank, what's the future? Do you think it's bright or when our vacation is gone, that's the end of Ecobank? No, Ecobank is an institution. I guess others have come before me and left. Mm. 
I've come to play my part, I'll move on. That institution is a great one and it has a very bright future. More with Albert after the break. We'll be right back. At Echo Bank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking, with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure while individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African, and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Ecobank Ghana have several awards to their credit. Asian Banker 2014 Best Retail Bank in Ghana, CIMG Best Bank of the Year 2001 to 2006 and 2012. The Corporate Initiative Ghana Best Bank of the Year Award 2012. Best Financial Services Provider 2012, just to mention a few. I wish Ecobank family a happy silver anniversary. God richly bless you. We just want to thank them so much uh, for the confidence that they had in us. Um, um, it was because of them that we have come this far. You know, without the customers, we are no bank. Without the customers, we don't have an institution. So we just want to um, express our appreciation you know, to them for keeping faith with us and being with us and doing business with us. Uh, so we are 25 years now. So this has been the story of Ecobank Ghana. Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back and are uh, you still watching The Hard Truth? Proudly brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. And uh, Albert Essien is my guest. Albert, what would you do? Would you get into politics from no. here? Why? Why a big no? I will not get into politics. Why is that? I've always been a private sector person. Mm. I could work for government, advising government, but playing oh, the back what role. What if the Bank of, or the government of Ghana calls and says, please be the governor of Ghana, would you say no? No, no, that would be a yes. He's At that smiling. point, I will reflect. I, I can't give an answer up front here. Mm. But definitely, I wouldn't mind advising governments, mm. but not but you want to playing be the front active. role. Mm. No, I don't want to be in active politics. Mm. Is it too dirty for you? It's not an issue of being dirty. I guess uh, I'm not a politician. I'm yep. not cut for that job. Really? So no. you, don't have, you don't have dreams of becoming president of Ghana one day? I've never thought about that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I want to know, we talk about the, I mean, the, the, the city is depreciating dramatically and, mm. and all. What would you say the solution to this is? I've always said that if you live beyond your means, then you need to borrow. Mm. That is what is happening to us. Mm. There's the need for some spending discipline. The government needs to rein in its expenditure. That will slow down the depreciation and perhaps cut it off. But the IMF program just started. Do you think it can help? The IMF program will help? I still believe that the IMF program, if well executed, mm. will help. It's all about execution. It's all about discipline. It's all about rigor. That is what we need in our body politic. Six months ago, I asked you if President Mahama was doing well. You said yes. Do you still stand by? Looking I believe at so. It takes time for some of these uh, measures to bear fruit. So he's doing well. I believe he's doing what he has to do. Yeah. But they need to be a bit more ruthless. So I'm execution. asking you again, is President Mahama doing well? He's doing what he's now. supposed to do. Mm. But as a team, they need to execute with more speed. How much were you paid, sir? Group CEO, how much are you paid? Well, I'm paid quite some good money. Oh. <laughs> paid I, quite I, some good money. I'm sure you paid in dollars. Ours is a dollar-denominated company. Mm. 
So uh, I was paid in U.S. dollars. Yeah. Okay, so you are paid in dollars. People are paid in cities, and then the city is just high. They go out buy, come and sell, and all that. So looking at all of that, do you think that President Mahama is doing well? President Mahama manages a city economy. Right. I work for a company that is dollar denominated. You can't compare apples and oranges. Finally, what would you tell? Um, you know, people out there, especially young ones who want to come into the banking sector and then look at Albert Einstein and said, I want to be Albert one day, what would you say to them? I will say they should be disciplined. Uh, mm -hmm. They need to have uh, that rigor uh, and they need to have the passion for the work they love to do. Discipline, rigor, having yeah. passion for the work they do. Exactly. You say that all the time. I say that all the you time all because the time. that is what drives you to success. Mm. Thank you so much, sir, Thank for you. talking to the heart and for Thank having you us here at your house. You. So, I've been talking to uh, Mr. Albert Essien, uh, retired group CEO of EcoBank, and uh, the show is proudly brought to you by EcoBank. My name is Nana Akusi Aknedu. Lovely makeup done by Valerie Lawson and uh, Reflex Images. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening.